the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. So let, let's just make sure you remember that. That's what God is trying to... <laughs> The, this is what this prayer about in John 17 is the fact that we've been sanctified and we've been sent into this world to preach the word of God. And I'm asking ministers and pastors to teach the saints, the scripture saints, to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is not a ministry of disqualification, it's a ministry of life, it's a ministry of God, of us reconciling man back to God. And Jesus basically gave in John 17 that prayer for, for, for believers to be one, you know? So we'll, we'll wrap it up here. This is John 17, 15. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even I'm not of the world. Sanctify, sanctify them through that truth. That word is true. But thou sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. And for that sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified for the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Next scripture, this is the last slide. I promise you that. See, it's short, right? It says here, that they all may be one, saints. Not where we got this political divide of one party, you got Democrats, you got Republicans, and we try to sit there and, and try to divide the whole country. He wants us to be one. Even our country is called the United States. And yet, we are falling into the trap of division. Oh, because you got this political party, I can't stand you. Oh, you don't like my you don't you don't like my candidate. I can't stand you. Are, are you following Jesus or are you following the political party? Are you following Jesus or are you following people that that, that you know dog on where that they that they they have a different political bit of opinion of you? Are you following them or are you following Jesus? Are you following them or are you following Jesus? Who are you following? Who are you following? Now, I'm talking about you, because that's who you're going to have to answer to when you go before God. Your child will go before God without you. You're not going to be an advocate for your child. Your child's not going to be an advocate for you. Your pastor's not going to be an advocate for you. Advocate for you. Your political party will not be an advocate for you. You will go before God by yourself and you got to an answer to why you're not doing what the word of God is telling you to do. You have to do that. That is your responsibility. So my point is, and I'm going to bring this up again. This, last, this is the last slide. He said in verse John 17, 21, that they all may be one. Not in the not Republican, not Democrat. He didn't tell you not to be a Republican. He's not telling you not to be a Democrat. He still said whether you are the party, political party, or you are one. Just like we're in the United States, we are one. He said, verse, and then he said, as thou father has are in me, I in thee, and that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me out by us being one. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be what? One. Not a political party supposed to separate us. Not our color of skin is supposed to separate us. Nobody things are supposed to separate us because we're one in Christ Jesus. Pastors, please tell people we are one in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter. Even if you talk about the dog one. Fascination, all that other junk. We're still one in Christ Jesus. We're not divided. We are united in this country. In the United States of America, we are one. And we need to operate as one because He wants us to be one. We need the world to see that we're one. We may have different opinions. We're supposed to have different opinions. We're not puppets, but we're still one. And the 
what makes us one is the word of God. That's what makes us one. That's what makes us unique. It's the word of God, even our constitution. If we be in line with the constitution, instead of sitting there and being in line with, 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 with the color of skin or party affiliation. One nation under God. Come on now. But yet we allow the word that be indivisible, we allow it to be divisible. We allow it to be in division because we're not understanding the biblical principle of God to be in one. Be one in Christ Jesus. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Be one. Here's the scripture says, 22, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. I am them, and thou in me, that's the Father, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. We are supposed to be one in Christ Jesus. We are one. We are one in Christ Jesus. He wants us to be one. He don't want us to be divided because of our shortfall, because all of us have shortfalls. All of us have shortfalls. Every last one of us has shortfalls. If we're united, united our weaknesses so we can be strong, united. We're the United States of America. We are one in Christ Jesus. So therefore, no, now somebody can say, well, but you're leaving out the atheists and you're leaving out the Islam, you're leaving out the Hindu. No, no, I'm not. He wants us to be one so that the world will know that we are sent by him. We, we, we that are Christians are sent by him. Our oneness will be a witness to other people so they can see the glory of God because we glorify the Father. Let them, if they can glorify the Father, let them glorify. We are one, glorifying God the Father by us lifting up. And by him giving us a choice, we're telling other people you have a choice too. And we're not gonna hate you because you make the right, different choice. If you wanna be an atheist, I still love you. And I'm not going to hate you because that is not what I'm called to do. I'm not going to condemn you because I'm not called to condemn you. I am called to do what Christ did, which was to save the world. So all I can do is let you know where Jesus is on the way. And if you don't want to go that way, then you made that choice. But I'm not going to sit there like the crusade and try to kill you and beat you up because you didn't go the way of Jesus. That is not our calling. We are not, Jesus didn't force us to receive him. We're not gonna force anybody to receive Jesus. All we can do is tell you, that is the way. There's a lot of ways to lead to destruction, but Jesus is the way. And if you go to destruction, you go because you choose to go to destruction. And he gave you the right to choose to go to destruction. He called, called us to tell you the bridge is out. Huh? <laughs> the bridge is out that way. I, I recommend you detour toward Jesus. You need to take this off ramp toward Jesus. Instead of going off, then you keep going down the road of destruction. There's an off ramp called Jesus for eternal life. You keep going on this road, it's eternal death, but I am not going to beat you up. I am not going to get angry because you chose to go that way. That is not my calling. And none of the Christians are supposed to have that anger in them because somebody chose to go to the road of destruction. All you need to do is get the blood off your hand and say it is, there's an off ramp. I recommend you take it. I took it. But I'm not going to come and suck it on a limit because you decided to keep going to the going straight down the road where the bridge is out. That's not, that's that's what we get all messed up. And that was people look at us getting all angry because they're still on the road. You know, what's that song? I'm on the highway to hell. If they want to go there, all you're doing is say there's an off ramp. I ain't going with you. Yeah, and don't let people 
take you there because they're not on the because they, they didn't take the off ramp. You took the off ramp. It's almost like you you need to be waving. Hey, the off ramp down the road. There's an off ramp. There's an exit on the off ramp. There's a bridge out if you keep going straight. But if there's an off ramp, but I love you anyway. I love you because he gave me the choice too to take the off ramp or to keep going down to the road of destruction. But I all I'm called to do is tell you there's an off ramp called Jesus Christ. But I'm not gonna get mad with you. I'm not gonna play with the old, you know. One ministry suggested he ought to be in the crusade. He would died trying to take something in the flesh, but it wasn't in the spirit. But all we're supposed to tell people there's an off ramp. Tell your children there's an off ramp. Tell your wives there's an off ramp. There's people that got unforgiveness and all that other stuff too. Tell them there's an off ramp. <laughs> Man, glory to God. But I'm not an angry if you don't choose. All I can sit there and really have prayer, just pray for you and, 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 and just pray for the mercy of God for you. Not permission to sin, but just pray for you and preach the gospel. Amen. That's what God wants us to do. I think this one truly is the last slide. I thought it was the, the other one, but it's this last one right here. And uh, we'll close out with this. It says right here. John 70, 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory that thou hast given me, that thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love of which thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Make sure I have another slide there so we can close out. The prayer from Christ, John 17. I pray and encourage all of you to read John 17 for yourself. And any other script that I brought up, I, I pray that you will review them for yourself. I, nobody's given anybody permission to sin. We're trying to point the way. And we that are believers need to operate in one and love one another so we can point the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. You're not going to go to the Father through a political party. You're not going to go through the Father through the color of your skin. You're not going to go through anything other than going the way that Christ told you. You know, one of the studies was glad to bring one day when he said, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? How many people have given their soul away for stuff? Be able to be bold enough to say that I'm superior because of the color of my skin and the hate somebody and don't forgive people. You're not telling them what they did was okay. All you said is, I'm not going to let it be dwelled in my life. I'm not going to allow hate. I'm not going to give hate for hate. Because there's a hater has no eternal life. I ain't got time for that. You don't have time for that. So I, I pray. That, that you really got some out of this, sec this lesson. I will break it down in segments because uh, I think it's important that key points are broken in segments so a person can chew on those different segments. Yes, we've been here, I've been here you know, since eight o'clock. Yes, so it's been a long time. So the thing about it is that they, there's so much that the Bible has to say that to, to minister to people about. So, but to digest it, we'll break it up just like the Bible is broken up. We have little subcategories and topics in the Bible. We will do this for this video too. All I'm trying to do is reach the world, do my part. He told me he sent me some food. You know, he sent all of us. You don't have to have a license to be a minister or be ordained to be a minister. Pastor, we're not trying to send them not to go to your church. What I'm saying is that pastors, 
minister, equip them to go do the ministry that's outside the four walls. Okay? That's really what I'm trying to say. Now I know you can bring them on in. If you if that's if that's the best way you can take teach your people, just bring them into your four walls, then 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 do that. Just remember what God says. You're supposed to support the saints and do the work of the ministry. You're supposed to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. They can do the ministry at the job. They can do the ministry in their home. So they got to go to the home. They got to go to the job, Pastor. They got to face the world out there, Pastor. So it's not just, it's a put them, please, to do the work of the ministry. Hey, God bless you. I hope you have a nice uh, holiday. This holiday, we're talking about President's Day. Uh, take that time off and just reflect and enjoy yourself. But this 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 is this is great to so get into the word of God and, and I hope that most of the things that matter is not what I say or your party or your parents or your brother and sister pastors. It's what the word says. Study the word. We just did John 17. Study that for yourself. Get revelation for yourself. We did Romans chapter 1. We talked about the wrath of God. Look at it. Read it for yourself. Understand it's not talking about just sexual orientation. It's talking about all matters of our godliness and our righteousness. And then we are supposed to steer ourselves away from all that godliness and unrighteousness. And I'm talking about steering our, away from the people. We're supposed to love the people. You don't have to agree with people. Using the flesh and because the disagreement is not the way of God. God gives people a choice. You give people a choice. You can't make somebody change. Huh? You can't make somebody uh, not forgive. You can just love them. The Bible says we love and kindness are going to. So love them. Amen? Hey, I got excited. I, I, I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll pray out and then we'll go and close out. Amen. Father, I thank you for this opportunity when we came to worship and study your word, God. I thank you, Father, for the person that's watching this video, whether in total or broken down in segments, that they, they enjoy hearing your words and only what was written and presented is what they need to retain more than anything else. Because it's not about what people receive. I said, or somebody else said, it's not about political parties, it's not about color skin, not about people's sexual orientation, it's about following the way, which is Jesus Christ. I say, protect those until we meet again, and I pray, Father, as we lift you up and glorify your name, let everything that we do, we do and teach, if it's worthy and it will glorify your name, let it be posted and let it draw men to hear your word. Women, hear your word, amen. Children, hear your word, amen. God bless you, Father. I thank you and I thank you for those who listen and will listen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. God bless you, saints, and I hope you have a blessed and wonderful rest of the week. Jesus is Lord, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>